What's up guys, my name is Memo and this is my 1999 Eclipse GSX. So one day I stepped out of my house and I was looking over to my neighbor's house and her boyfriend shows up in a 1995 GSX, which I'd never seen him before prior to that. Walked over there, was super excited because it had a Kaminari uh, body kit and Kaminari wing. So I approached him and I said, hi, my name is Memo. So we ended up chit-chatting about his car where he gave me a ride in his GSX. I've never been on an uh, all-wheel drive car, let alone a turbo car, and that forever changed my life and that's what brought me to my first car, my 1999. GSX. So after that day, I was hooked on this platform. So I went to the dealership in National City and I said, hey, I would love to test drive your all-wheel drive turbo Eclipse. R let me remind you, I'm 17 year old at this time. And they looked at me and said, there's no way we're gonna allow you to drive this car on a test drive. So they didn't let me drive it, but I didn't give up. I went to the next Mitsubishi dealership 20 minutes east from San Diego. And I asked them the same thing. I said, can I test drive your all-wheel drive turbo Eclipse? And they said, yeah, no problem. Let's just get a copy of your driver's license. So me and my friend were, we were super stoked. We're 17-year-old uh, kids about to drive almost a $30,000 car straight out of high school. So we test drove it. We both looked at each other and I said, I'm going to get this. So I left the dealership and I said, I'll be right back later today. Sure enough, went, went back, we financed the car and I had a brand new all-wheel drive turbo Mitsubishi Eclipse and it was black, I think it's called Capilla Black. So with that being said, I am the original order of this vehicle here. It only has 53,000 original miles, so I can never sell this vehicle and that's why we have it sitting here with me now. If not, I probably would have sold it a long time ago, but I can't do that. This is um, an attachment to my hip almost, uh, being the original owner. Back in the days, you had to go with the basic mods, intake and exhaust. So first thing I did was buy an Akimoto air filter kit, gritty upper and lower intercooler piping with the gritty type S blow valve, which was the thing to do on this vehicle back in the days. Then after that, we went ahead and put a gritty SP exhaust, and then we put a two inch drop Sprint Springs, I don't even think that company is still around. Sprint Springs, uh, two inch low wing springs, because they were good for the budget, and that's what we went with. So back in the 90s, there were car groups or crews, and I had a crew called Total Eclipse. Me and my buddy started it, and we ended up having over 25 DSMs in our club. We would go to the legal street races, but we also would do those late night street races prior to the whole Fast and the Furious scene was even a thing. So obviously getting into street racing would get you into trouble. They started cracking down on street uh, racing, and they started finding and taking away of vehicles. So what I ended up doing is I ended up taking my car to the body shop. I picked up the Blitz kit with the Evo front bumper, and I ended up taking a Chewy's Auto Body and I went show. So that's where we got the side skirts that are molded, the rear bumpers molded, and we got the Z3 front fenders that are molded as well. The only thing that's not molded on this vehicle is the front bumper because you want to make sure that you're able to move it back and forth being it's so low. So back up a couple months prior to me taking my vehicle to the body shop, I went to a, a import car show up in Pomona and there was, there was a little table and they were saying casting for a movie called Redline. So I just signed up, put, you know, they took a picture of me with my information and I didn't think nothing of it. A month later, while, while my car was at the body shop, they called me and said, hey, we would love to use you as an extra in the movie Fast and the Furious. So I was like, wow, she said, but do you have a car to bring up? Because they were casting not only the person, but also the cars. But for the most part, the main thing was they were casting cars and so, unfortunately, my car was at the body shop. At that time, I had my DSM club, and I was able to borrow my buddy's uh, yellow uh, modified body kit out Eclipse for the movie. So then I moved to LA for about two months. I stayed at my grandma's house in East LA. So I got paid to be an extra, but when I was there, I just thought I was gonna be behind the scenes. When I got there, they actually made me get a SAG card because I was actually part of Hector's crew and that was not just being an extra, that was being a, a paid extra plus bonuses. So the whole experience was a lot different. You know, you're sitting down and you're having lunch and you're, you're sitting with all these other extras 
that you know have done movies in the past you know you get to meet Paul Walker you get to meet Noel G you get to see Vin Diesel and Jordana Brewster and again at this stage I'm 20 years old this is back in 2000 we don't know what this movie is going to be like but it is a universal picture so you know it's going to be a big production so while we're filming you know it's almost very, like nostalgic for me because they're making these scenes these street racing scenes kind of like what I grew up in in the late 90s early 2000s prior to the Fast and the Furious so they did all their homework on the street race scene and how the cars were and how the you know how they were set up and the meetups and stuff like that. So I think Fast and Furious Part One did a great job on how we used to do it. So it almost feels like they took a chapter of our time and put it on screen for everybody else to see it and enjoy it. As soon as the movie came out, you walked out of the movie theater. Everybody starts revving and street racing. So now that brought more attention to this industry, which was good for manufacturers that are making these aftermarket parts. But as far as the underground racers and the underground the old school people, this brought an attention to us. And with that brings police, tickets, fines, towings, and not a good time. So after filming the movie, I went to show. I, I stopped street racing. I stopped doing any kind of drag racing at all, just because the scene was so hot because of the movie. And then from that, once we did the body kit and the roll cage and everything in the vehicle, it went to a brandy wine with the micro flake candy. I put air struts in it and I cracked the body kit and that just pretty much devastated me and I stopped wanting to drive this car. And eventually I, the, cast, the car sat for two years. I mean, if you've ever owned a car with a fiberglass body kit, you know it's never fun hitting a pothole or hitting a speed bump or anything like that the car pretty much just sat and it was kind of I kind of outgrew it for that time frame between 2003 to actually to 2018 the car the car sat in this warehouse collected dust and that's why right now it has low miles the only time I will ever start it or turn it on is was to smog it and drive it around the block you know the current scene you know it's I see that there's a lot of you know young youngsters or even people my age kind of bringing these cars back um, and getting very nostalgic because of the movie. Um, but it's, it's also exciting to see them taking on a challenge on restoring these because there's, the parts on these vehicles are very hard to find. So that you, you, know, you start ending, having to go to junkyards or swapping parts from other DSMers. But I think the DSM community is actually very solid. In 2018, I got approached to make a video about my car and that person said, hey, you should look into just doing YouTube videos on your car on the DSM platform. And I said, yeah, let's do it. He ended up saying, you should use the hashtag save the eclipse. And me being the person that I am, I said, I kind of like that. So we, I started posting Instagram stuff about my car and using the hashtag Save the Eclipse. Because Save the Eclipse, I think that this DSM community got stronger. I think that it was kind of like fading again. We're doing a good job right now from these cars are going extinct. I think these cars are gonna be classics just because you don't see them. Anytime I post a picture that I have one of these cars, they almost, everybody always says, I haven't seen one in a long time. So one thing that I, that I to this day, I kind of regret doing is the body kit. I do, but I don't because, you know, I was 20 years old, you couldn't tell me anything, and, and this was what the scene was, you know, big wings, body kits, and a loud exhaust. But I wish I would have never done it, for one reason is that, I, you know, you don't, you don't get to enjoy the vehicle and drive it every day. But leaving it like this also brings, brings a nostalgic feeling of my early 20s. So I ended up getting the DSM bug and I ended up picking the white 1999 GSX, which is considered the Angry Panda. Not only that, but I ended up buying another one, 1997 GSX in the back. So anything I buy or get DSM is a GSX. So the future of my cars are this one, put some racing heart uh, M5s, get them restored and put them on so we could keep this vehicle period correct and pretty much just keep it as just a showpiece. Um, and keep it in the warehouse and then maybe show it a couple shows. The white Angry Panda is getting full carbon hood, roof, hatch, bunch of carbon fiber accents, has a time attack roll cage in there, a Roth fab, and it's probably gonna do more shows and some track stuff. Now the silver one, that one's gonna be all OEM, just so I'm able 
to enjoy it, like I mentioned earlier, I wasn't able to completely enjoy this, but that one I feel like I am because that one will be all OEM. For the exterior, I have a Blitz side skirts and rear bumper. Uh, the front bumper is a Evo front bumper. I have M3 style mirrors. I also have shaved door handles on both sides. And then I have a set of Z3 front fenders. As, as far as suspension, I have a set of two inch drop sprint springs that I bought back in 1999. They're still on the car. So as far as interior mods, I ended up doing some red accents by Apollo Upholstery. Apollo Upholstery was the main upholster for the Fast and the Furious cars. Um, I have the, the Cromali roll cage. I have the Ignite. Uh, push button start, I have a Gretti shift knob, and I have a triple pod gauge with three autometer gauges. So as far as engine mods, just bolt-ons, I have a uh, engine technology custom uh, intake. As you can see, the whole engine bay is chromed out. I have uh, custom upper intercooler piping with the Gretti, Gretti Type S. 2600 ACT a clutch. Engine technology spark plug cover, billet aluminum, fuse box cover, engine technology reservoir, I have the clear timing bell cover, and a bunch of red accents. Stock turbo, no upgraded turbo, no upgraded injection. Thank you guys for watching the story on my 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX.